Hi, Wilton Tina. So, you almost dominated the whole flyweight division. So, will you, if you win this fight, will you go after the pantomweight? Uh, you know, every possibility is still there. Maybe bantamweight, but still a lot of like uh, new contenders rising into my division. So any of two, this option would work for me. Well, will you ever be fight against uh, Amanda Nunes again? Amanda Nunes, Juliana Peña, whoever. Hey, Valentina. Um, I know you're you live life for all for the experiences and you like to you know do all sorts of different things so getting to fight over here um, on this type of pay-per-view what how much do you appreciate this type of moment mm, i appreciate every single opportunity what i have fighting under the biggest organization in the world in mixed martial arts ufc and definitely being um like part of the mm, kind of like history, right? First pay-per-view in Asia, in Singapore, it's uh, something big. The same uh, when I fought it in Jacksonville, when um, after this like shut down, like globally, it was the first event and it, it was uh, super energetic. And it felt this energy in when I stepped into the octagon, all fans, all public, it's, uh, I feel that. And I hope it's going to be the same this Sunday here in Singapore. And we had Tyla in here earlier, and she said you're as close to the perfect fighter as it gets, but you're not perfect. And her and her team have found flaws in your game uh, through this training camp. What do you think she might be talking about in terms of your flaws? Uh, or, and do you think maybe she's just telling herself that because she has to tell herself something to win the fight? I think it's kind of like hypnotizing herself, trying to convince there is something that should be, like everyone is not perfect. Definitely not everyone is perfect, but uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, all my opponents, they were saying the same. The same over and over. It's like no one is unbeatable. She has some like hole in her games, but once they are step inside the octagon, they feel the opposite side. They feel the difference between the fighters. And this is the most important. She's trying to hypnotize her herself to convince that there should be, but she's wrong. It's not going to work for her. And uh, people might ask, you know, you're at the point in your title reign where, you know, they're looking everywhere for challenges for you and stuff. Um, what is the daily motivation like now compared to what it was earlier in your reign? Uh, have you had to change things to motivate yourself or are these fights, no matter who it's against, do you still get up for each one of them the same? Actually, being martial artist, it's, this is my biggest motivation. My family, my teammates, my team, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, it says everything. I don't need to find like extra motivation, go like be hunger or something like that. I'm in martial arts for so many years. I started when I was five, 29 years fighting, competing and doing like training daily and it's kind of like it's teach me that I don't have to have something extra to motivate myself because being martial arts and compete here, it's motivation by, by itself. Is it possible, though, part of the reason why you're talking about maybe going to another division, a second belt, is this one of the new things that you can find for yourself, though? I think it's mostly because like people want that, <laughs> and it's it's uh, it was like um, discussion through the years. Our trilogy with Amanda. Now people speaking about like Juliana, and uh, no matter what outcome gonna be in their fight in July, either works for me because it's kind of like will be interesting fight against Amanda, and uh, like we have history with Juliana because like few years ago I submitted her, and so it's gonna be. Either, either like option is gonna work for me. Um, I don't know if this is a stupid question or not, because I've heard, I've just seen people talk about. It. There's no way you could move down in weight, right? This is the lowest you can fight at. To move down, it means struggling and like and being hard weight cut. It, mm, I have to think about it. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, speaking of down a weight class, uh, 
the UFC released that video of you and Joanna having kind of a moment in the hallway. I know uh, you guys have the same management and stuff now. Um, just going back to when you fought her, to the relationship you guys have now, um, what do you just have to say about that? Um, I know Joanna through the years. We uh, we shared our history in Muay Thai. We fought uh, like about three times in Muay Thai in three different world, world championships. Then in UFC. So it's kind of like um, um, it's mutual respect. In no matter what we fought and how it was, everything, I respect her as a fighter, hard worker, and everything when, what she's doing. And it's great to like fight in the same card, but now in this time, not like as opponents, but uh, it's, it's just a good feeling. It's good feeling like um, mm, when you see a good fighter and you respect this fighter, it's kind of like it's great to have uh, uh, this kind of fighters on a fight card UFC 275 in Singapore. Do you hope to see her win against Wally? And I know Wally has said some things about you in the past, so do you hope Joanna beats her? Uh, you know, I think their first fight Joanna won, and it's going to be different uh, fight, like uh, not five rounds, three rounds, and uh, I, I think, yeah, I think Joanna has everything to prove that the first time it was in her, in, uh, in her decision, yeah. Speaking of Talia, uh, before she got to the UFC, she had a lot of knockout victories uh, on the regional circuit, but it hasn't really translated to the UFC. She's only had one stoppage win, and that was her last one. Why do you think her power maybe hasn't translated to the UFC octagon? Is it just level of competition? Do you think she's not been comfortable inside the UFC? Like, where do you think her power hasn't translated? Oh, definitely. It's a level of competition because we are, uh, as I mentioned before, we are speaking of the best league in the world <laughs> of mixed martial arts. Here, you cannot find like easy opponents, easy uh, matchups, and there is no just weak fighters. There are best here, best of the best in the world. And then you had mentioned... You had mentioned there's a lot of uh, other title challengers coming up through the division, your division. And then we have a lot of young fighters, like Erin Blanchfield said she wants to beat you specifically. So it seems like these young fighters, that being the one to beat you has become almost as important as winning the title. They want to, they want to be the ones to end your reign. So what do you make of all of these young fighters using you as the benchmark as opposed to the title? Uh, it's amazing feeling and I really appreciate that and especially if I can motivate someone for me It's a huge achievement already uh, and I continue my martial arts. I continue be um, Myself the way I live the life and if that thing can inspi inspire someone it's kind of it's kind of the best feeling in the world How do you see the results of the fight? Would you want to do the fight in 50, uh, 25 minutes or less? To finish as soon as I can. So good. Thank you. Thank you so much.